What's up guys, this is Majesty95 from PX1 Sports, and I am going to do a passing tutorial today. I am streaming this live on Twitch, so um, we're going to have some questions coming in and guys answering stuff, so I will be pausing and, and communicating through that, um, and so for those of you watching on YouTube, uh, you'll get to see that kind of makes sense why you know that's happening. If you're catching this and you didn't get to see it live, you can always tune in on twitch.tv slash majesty95. That's my channel. Follow me. We'll let you know when I get on. Most of the time I'm broadcasting games play, but occasionally I'll do stuff like this to try to help people out. We've been having some issues with some of the players in our Madden 15 connected franchise where guys are having, still having trouble, you know, throwing the ball. So I think... I think I have an idea of what some of the problem is, uh, and I just wanted to go over it real quick, kind of talk about some basic concepts when throwing, reading defenses, and whatnot, and, you know, hope that it maybe helps some of the guys get a little bit better and, you know, alleviate some of the frustration that they felt. Um, the first thing I want to go over is basically, you know, your concepts. You have to know your concepts and, um, you know, what you're looking at doing uh, when you're passing the ball, once you, what's your ideal? You know, most people know what slants are, um, but you know, what is Omaha? What is stick? Ohio spacing? What are they doing? What are you trying to accomplish with it? Uh, your medium passes, smash routes, um, crossing routes, um, yeah, flat curl, stuff like that, mash. What are all those doing? What are you trying to accomplish? So that's some of the things we're going to talk about. I'm not going to go through all of them because you can go through the tutorial and kind of learn all of those. But I'm just going to, uh, you know, tackle the the main. Um, the main ideas behind them. So first thing we'll go in is man coverage. And we'll look at man and you know most people, a lot of people, if you're if you're facing a defense that has good cornerbacks that are playing man coverage or even good linebackers, they can be a big problem um, you know when playing man coverage. So first thing we'll do is talk about some concepts that can beat man coverage. Now one of the things you have to do when you're calling your plays is you have to be calling your plays with a purpose. Why are you calling what you're playing? What you're calling? A lot of times I see people that are, it looks like they're just randomly calling plays. They don't really have a purpose, and that's part of the problem right there. If you're facing a guy that's playing, you know, a lot of cover two sink or a lot of cover three, or he's always in cover four, third and long, whatever, you know that. But you're running plays that are designed to beat man. You're not going to get the results that you want. You know, you're going to be running into, um, you're going to be leaving a lot on the table, basically. You know, conversely, you know, if you're facing a guy that's playing man coverage and you're running, you know, a lot of routes that are designed to attack zones, like flood concepts um, and curl flats and stuff like that, then you're going to be in trouble there, too. So that's the first thing, you know, is why are you calling your plays? What's the purpose behind them? What are you trying to achieve? You gotta pay attention to what your what your opponent's doing, and try to react that way. So we'll look at man first. Um, this is a good concept for running man, which is slant plays. Um, we'll do the quick slant. We have to do the slant on the outside receiver, a drag on the inside, and then we have a flat to the opposite side. This is a play that most people don't utilize effectively. Um, they'll look to the slant or the drag, and they they don't read at all that inside receiver on the release. So I'll show you what you could do. Um, we'll go concept. Let's just do under. I call it two man under. Cover two man. Okay, so when you first come up to the line, you want to read what the defense is doing and take a look and try to see if you can find where your edge is. Okay, so I always do this. I always pull it up, I always look and say, okay. Here's the defense, is what I'm looking at. Now, the first thing I notice is on the right-hand side, Kyle Rudolph is in this little slant towards the sideline. And I'm guessing that the guy with the C is who he's um, who's responsible for covering him. But he's going to have leverage on him. So more often than not, that route's going to come open. So I'm going to look to that. That's going to be my first read. Okay. My second read over here, if I go over here to Greg Jennings, um, he's manned up and he's pressed, right? If I look at his stats here, he's got a minus 20 release. He's not getting off that press very well. So that's going to be a guy that I'm not going to really think about. The next one would be Jarius Wright. Now, he's got speed on this guy, and he's not getting pressed. So there's a good chance that he's going to come off clean. 
So he is going to be my second read. And then the last one is going to be this guy right here. He doesn't have a significant advantage, and this guy is playing up on him, so he's probably not going to come open. But he's going to be my third read if I need to go to it in case you know his, his defender would get picked. Let's run it, see what happens. And as we can see, as I thought, Kyle Rudolph was wide open, and we get a nine-yard gain out of it. So that's one of the things that you have to pay attention to when when you're on offense is what is the defense giving you what are they showing you what is your best chance of success so more often than not either Rudolph or right is going to be open every time so against this alignment that's what I'm going to look for now that one he read it a little bit better and he cut under it so it could have been picked off I'm mean, I still kind of threw it I still kind of forced it there so that's another thing you don't want to get in the habit of doing is just saying oh well it's open I'm just going to throw it regardless. Well, no. Pay attention to what's going on and adjust accordingly. Now he's going. And I'm worried about it after the last time he jumped it. So now I dump it underneath the right. And you know, another 10-yard gain. So that's the basic basic principle there here. Here he got out. Rudolph got out to more of a lead. I tried to throw it to him, but it got batted down at the line. And that one's covered a little bit tighter, so we'll throw it underneath here and still seven, eight yard gain. That's that's the basic premise there, you know, if you're running a man. Now let's switch it up a little bit and see if we get something a little bit different. Let's take those same concepts. We're gonna go against a random, random play, okay? Now judging by the way the alignment is here, this is probably still, um, this is probably actually cover two. We got two high safeties, but it's one of those where they're going to shade it and make it look like the, um, the defender from the far right moved over to the left, make it look like it's man, but I'm guessing it's actually going to be zone. But the thing is, is that linebacker is still going to have to come over there and cover Rudolph. So he's still going to be our read. If it is a zone, it means right or Jennings are going to be coming over after it. The reason we don't want to go to Johnson necessarily is because that outside corner, if this is cover two, is going to play up underneath it. And it's very likely he's going to jump it, take it to the house. We don't want to do that. So again, we're going to look through Rudolph, we're going to look to right, and then Jennings now will be our third read in case the other two aren't open. Now, it's exactly what I thought it was. It was a zone. Um, one thing that was different is the linebacker, or the defensive end, actually peeled off. We look at this here. We step back, see the defensive end out there on Rudolph. He drops. So as soon as I see him drop, I immediately say, okay, I'm not throwing to this guy. Because, you know, he's going to try to undercut it. As I watch it, you know, if I sit there and wait... You know, he, now he's probably he's he's open. I can throw it to him and he's going to get by, but I don't know how fast they're going to get in. So I want to make sure that I get the ball out and get a completion, try to move it. So I throw it underneath. I don't wind up getting any getting any yards there, but you know I didn't I didn't force the pass right there and get it picked off, which could have happened. And I also didn't try to hold on to it too long and you know take a sack or something like that. So I just dump it off underneath. Now the other thing, as I said, my other read out here would be Jennings. Um, this actually wound up being cover four. Um, so actually, I could have thrown it underneath to um, John or yeah Johnson out here because he's wide open. I can complete it. I'll probably get about five yards. But I was as soon as I saw that guy drop back, I just focused. I figured um, I figured Jarius Wright was going to come open underneath here. Completed it. It wasn't a good throw. Brought him back across. We didn't get any yards out of it, but you know, we didn't lose any yards. We didn't throw an interception. So overall, it's a reasonable success. So now we're looking at, again, this one looks like cover two press. We've got two safeties high. We've got the corner who's still sitting out there on that side. We already automatically know that Rudolph's not going to be an option here, at least not an immediate one. Um, we've got press on the other side there on Jennings. And we're going to look at that. He's probably not going to get a great release. So really our only option here is probably going to be right underneath or to dump it off to Asiata. I could always hot route here and try to create something different and, you know, see if I could... You know, create something. I could, you know, maybe hot route Jennings on a fly and try to bring him off and then throw it to Johnson underneath. But there's no guarantee that, you know, the 
cornerback's going to come off. So just for simplicity's sake, I'm going to look for right as my number one option, and then Asiata as my check down. You know, this isn't an ideal play against this defense, but normally I would probably audible out of it. But for information's sake, we'll, we'll run it and see what happens. So right was underneath, and we got a few yards out of it. So we'll look at maybe another play or two, just kind of see what's going on. This one looks like cover two man again. Uh, looks like Rudolph should be open. If not, again, it should be right. So we'll look, see what happens with that linebacker. It gives them a little bit of space. We'll hit Rudolph. If not, we'll try to come underneath. Right. Also looking out here, this cornerback might be blitzing, or he might just be threatening Johnson. Um, if he's blitzing, you know, if if the EB was playing off on Jennings, we could throw it out there to Johnson, because Johnson's not having anybody covering him. But with that guy playing underneath, in case it is cover two being disguised, um, I would be worried about don't want to throw an interception. So I'm just gonna go with Rudolph, and then Wright is my reads here. And as I thought, it was man, and Rudolph was open for easy 10, 12 yard completion. So now we look like we got a blitz. It looks like it's cover two, and again. But we got a blitz, and I'm trying to think. There's not a play, a cover two play. So this is probably cover one with that linebacker blitzing. Um, again, because he's blitzing, it looks like um, the cover man out there with the C. But he's a lot further off. So Rudolph, same basic reads here. Should still be Rudolph, and then right. It's actually a zone. He was just faking it, and he dropped back in coverage, but he didn't go out there with Rudolph. So that is. A basic play that a lot of people like to run, um, showing you how to attack different coverages. Now, just because this this one pops up, I'm going to show you. If you ever see this, this is exactly what you do. So this is basically a goal line defense um, at the 30 yard line, right? So Jarius Wright's my fastest receiver. He's got plus eight speed on this guy, and then Kyle Rudolph. I mean, he's just a tight end. We're going at best. There's going to be one guy going deep. We'll probably get man coverage. Um, at best, one safety back, and we're going to try to make him choose which way to go. Uh, I actually hit the wrong button there. But right right was where I wanted to throw it, and I didn't, didn't pay attention to what my read was. It was man coverage, and he was sticking with him. And you're not going to see this a lot, so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on it. But basically, you have nobody deep. You know at worst it's going to be cover three, probably. Um or cover one, or cover zero, just straight man. Um, so I outrighted right. He gets a little bit of a step there where I throw it. You know that would have been one of those things where I would have tried to lead it deep. Either he catches it or it's thrown in. So we're we're looking at this guy out here. He's got a little bit of a step on him because of, because of his speed. Um, just here is where he throws it. Like I said, if he leads him just right, that's probably a touchdown. That's what you want to look for in that situation. That's a big play possibility, but you're not going to see that very often at the 30-yard line. So let's go to... That's one way to attack man coverage. Um, look at a different concept. <clears throat> Again, you have to know what your opponent's doing and what he's most likely to do in a certain situation. So um, this is another play I like to run against man coverage is a slot post. Reason being is that if it is a soft zone coverage, like a cover three, if I wind up coming in at cover three or cover four, that out on the right-hand side is going to be open a high percentage of the time. So if they do come out in zone, and if they take away my other options, then I still have an option here. Like, this slot post is one of the most fundamentally balanced plays that you can run. Uh, you have the out, which can attack zone coverage. You have the deep post, which could, cover, which could attack a cover two. Um, you have the slot post, which can attack man, um, or potentially cover two if you can sneak it in there under it. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it against um, zone, but it can work. And then you have on the left-hand side, you have the comeback route, which which attacks man. And you also have a, um, a delayed release from the fullback into a check down. So you have, I mean, fundamentally, this is almost the perfect play. But I like to run it a lot. I mean, I try not to run it more than a couple times a game, try to keep it sim. Um, but it is a play that I like to use, especially in you know, crucial third down situations. So we'll run it also against man coverage. Um, we'll start with man. And most of the time, I'll do cover two man because a lot of guys don't use cover one. They're scared of that one high. So we'll just go with cover two to kind of show you how it works, and then we'll go against random. Uh, one. Okay. So 
when we're looking at this, the first thing we want to look at is on the right hand side, we've got the guy playing press. You know, we can judge it. He's probably not going to win that matchup. Even if it is man coverage, I'm still going to be scared to throw it to him. Because I'm scared that he's going to jump it and pick it, right? Um, it looks like it's man, just by the way that the defense is lined up. The linebackers kind of lined up on right. Uh, that Sherman is out there on Johnson. Okay, this looks like man coverage. I don't like my matchup out there. So what I'm going to look to here is I'm going to look to right first. I'm going to see if he can beat that linebacker because he's definitely going to have um, an advantage over him. If he can beat that linebacker, I want to try to hit him on the post in between the two safeties. If not, I'm going to come back down here to Asiata. Um, Asiata, you know, he's going to be running that angle route there. And if he's in man coverage, it's almost always going to be open. It's a pretty easy route complete, then my last route would be Rudolph, just on the check down. If either one of those are open for whatever reason, I'm going to check it down the Rudolph. So you always want to try to have at least two, but preferably three reads on every play and go through your progression quickly, get rid of the ball, avoid sacks, avoid interceptions. Uh, right cuts inside, it's open, nice throw, 17-18 yard game. Let's assume Let's that that's not open, and let's see what happens with Asiata down here. And coverage, he breaks inside. And I actually forced that one there, just trying to force it. It was a good coverage on him, so don't want to do that. You want to definitely look and see what happens. Look at it again. There he jumped it again, but he actually got the pass through. And I probably could have thrown it to the right. I wasn't paying attention. I was trying to force that underneath route. And this is what a lot of guys do that you don't want to do. You know, let's try to force routes like that. That's what a lot of guys do. They see one route and they're like, ooh, this is what I need to go to, and you try to force it. That's why you have a progression. So if I was really going to stick with my normal progression, I'd still almost always hit right here because he's in cut underneath. If I go to right there, boom, it's another completion. Here, the linebacker's playing really good coverage on him. He actually jumps it. Somehow the ball gets through, but then he drops it. Um, so again, right should always be your number one read. As soon as you see that break right there and he breaks inside, hit him. Nice, easy 15-yard game. Now let's change it up. You see it a bit basic cover two. Let's look at it against different um, different defenses. I'm going to show you how to read it and where you want to go. Random play. Okay. So look at it this way. We have one high safety, which tells us usually it's cover three or cover one. Um, the fact that the EVs are playing so far off, telling me it's cover three. So cover three automatically takes away Jennings, because that EB is probably going to stay underneath him or be able to jump, at least in this game. Um, you know, the one high safety means Wright's going to run right into that safety, but I don't want to go to him, um, which leaves these other three options. Now, the first thing that I notice here with Johnson is look at the way the, the DB is lined up there. He's got he's facing kind of at a 45 degree angle towards the quarterback. His back is to the sideline. If his back is to the sideline and I'm running a sideline route, that's always going to be my number one read. Always. Now, it's not always going to be there. Sometimes they're going to jump it, and sometimes they make some amazing plays, but that's always my number one read. You know, after that, we look down here, and it looks like we got a heavy blitz um, coming from the back side. Looks like we got, at least we got two linebackers blitzing over there. If that's the case, if this isn't open over here, then I'm definitely going to Asiata because he's probably not going to have anybody open. Now, that guy could be just showing blitz and he could actually wind up playing man coverage, but if he doesn't, Asiata's going to be wide open. Worst case scenario, we'll check it down here to our fullback. Um, or, well, he's our tight end, but a lot of, sometimes they have the fullback in this situation. You know, that's going to be our third read. So we're looking circle, triangle, and then R1. That was a great catch. Now, Sherman, I threw that early because as soon as I snapped that, as soon as I snap this, Sherman turns his hips. So I snap it, boom. He immediately goes face up on the receiver, which makes me nervous, right? Because now he's faced up on him. He's not drifting back, you know, kind of, you know, waiting to defend the underneath route. He immediately faces up on him. So I'm like, okay, I still feel okay about it. He's still backing up. He's giving him some coverage. I know the route's going to break right about 20. So here I'm throwing it, and I throw it just a tad early, but it winds up being just right because look how, look how tight that coverage is. You have to. Well, here, I didn't even notice this. This is the guy coming from the backside. Boom. Hits me. So I just got this out. It actually wound up being perfect. Now, he, he led him a little bit too much, and Johnson makes a great catch, but that's basically you know, how you want to read that. 
The second option, I was right, is they were blitzing two from the outside. So had I decided I didn't like that, and I could have thrown this real quick underneath the Assy out of there, and that would have been a completion for probably about five yards, unless he breaks that tackle on the safety coming up there, then it could have been a big game. All right, now we got one high, but now we're playing tight coverage. Now I'm looking at cover one. This isn't going to be man or this isn't going to be zone coverage again. I still don't like this out here, so I have a lot fewer options on this. Um, I don't like running this out route against man coverage, especially against Richard Sherman. Um, I don't like this inside route because we have the safety over the top up there. Uh, so really, my only two options here are going to be Asiata and Rudolph on the checkdown. Now this is a situation where, you know. If I had a better wide receiver out here, a better matchup, I could look to the comeback, and it still may come open, but I'm scared of that matchup. I'm going to stick away from it. Normally, I might audible out of this to something else, but let's say we're going to we're going to stick with it. Um, you know, I'm looking for Asiata or Rudolph, Triangle or R1. Those are my reads. And it winds up being a blitz off the outside, and, you know, I complete it just for a couple of yards, and that's all you want to do. Your basic goal is not to lose yards, Move not to throw gate. interceptions. That's Move what you want gate. to try to do. But you have to take a sack first to throw an interception. That's just what you want to do. Okay, Tyler, um, who's in our in our league, wants to see uh, a post route against cover two. Uh, so we'll look at that here in just a second. I'll run this one more time. This Again, this looks like cover two man, but we also have what looks like two man blitz. So um, basically this is the same read, cover one, cover three. Um, Right is going to be possible here. Uh, since it is cover two, we have the split safeties. We'll look at right, then we'll go Asiata and Rudolph. So we'll, we'll read it in that order. So X, triangle, R1. Right comes open, and he's wide open in the middle. Not a very good throw, but we'll find it for 15 yards. So that's the basic premise. You know, that's how you want to attack man. That's how you want to go through and read the defense and try to figure out. You always want to have a plan with where you're going with the ball based on what the defense is showing you. All right, so well, go in. He's saying that he's playing a game, and Wood Small just burned him with the post against Cover Two Sync, which the post is specifically designed to stop Cover Two Sync or uh, to beat Cover Two Sync. So here when we're looking pre-snap, what we want to do, if we're calling this play, pretty much what we're designed to do, the first thing I want to do is I want to auto plot of this play action because I don't want to get stuck in that play action animation if it comes over. Basically the idea, the premise of this play is it's specifically designed to beat cover two. Okay, so Wright is going to run the deep post. He's going to split the safety. That's what ideally what you want to have, have happen. Wright should cut underneath of that safety there on the left uh, the right safety is going to be focusing on Rudolph or Johnson, and that should leave with a nice pass right open in the middle of the field. So if you're, if you, when you come out cover two sink and they run a post on you, more often than not, you're going to get burned with it. If, if you know, that's somebody um, that knows what they're doing. So now here, against the Seattle defense, they wind up reading it right. And I tried to force it in there. Um, the players that you have are going to dictate a lot. Obviously, Earl Thomas um, back there is going to play things a lot differently than other guys do. I was also worried about the middle linebacker. Watch how deep he drops. You know, this is a, a, a Tampa, the Tampa 2 buck, I think is what they call it. Basically, where the middle linebacker plays deeper than normal. Generally, that middle linebacker will come up here on Rudolph. And I was just focusing on the post. I, my second read would have been Rudolph because if that linebacker does drop that deep, I hit Rudolph underneath there at the 20-yard line. That's an easy 10-yard completion. So I was just trying to force, the, force it. But if you look at it right here, if that guy doesn't keep um, going so far back, 
Wright is in the middle of that defense. Now, they, Seattle being who they are, they jump on it as soon as I throw it, and I wind up trying to needle it in between triple coverage, which you don't want to do. Um, but that's the basic premise against cover two, is you want to split those safeties. So my my fault on that one is that I should have actually, you know, write it out, and I would have went right, root off, and then Asiata is the check down. So we'll run it right this time. So we want to audible out Asiata out of the uh, play action because we don't want to get frozen in that animation. So again, our read is going to be triangle X R1. We're going to watch that middle linebacker. If he goes back to take away right, we're going to throw it underneath Rudolph. If he comes up to take away Rudolph, we're going to throw it to the right and hope that Earl Thomas doesn't jump in front of it and pick it off. And uh, the middle linebacker, I think that's Bobby Wagner. He kept dropping back on it, so um, no, I just I was trying to throw it underneath the Rudolph, but it got tipped at the line. Watching it, he's staying back. They wind up getting him exactly. This is why I always play, I always practice against um, Seattle and on all Madden, because it makes you make decisions quicker and it makes you try to read things against better players. And I always want to put this in a, a check down route because I don't want him just staying in the block. I always want to have that third option. So that's why I audible Asiata to the quick check down, the blocking room. So there, again, finally we complete it. Wagner's dropping back. He's playing that deep Tampa 2 buck where the middle linebacker drops back. So almost always I'm going to get um, Rudolph on her. That time, that time it came open, but threw it way too soft. And this is how you get beat um, against cover two. Uh, just the quarterback, not very good here, and the safety's too good. So I'm watching it, and I look, and I like what I'm seeing with Rudolph there. I can I can take this underneath, but here the we have the safeties are spread further out here for whatever reason. I noticed that and as soon as I saw that, I'm like, ooh, I like this. So I see right back there, and I'm like, okay, I want to try to hit him because I know with a good throw, it's going to be a touchdown. But he puts too much air under it and gives. Earl Thomas way too much time to come across, but that's the basic concept there. That's what's going to happen if you have if somebody runs a post against cover two, and you want to, and that's what you, how you want to beat cover two. You know, sometimes you're going to have that middle linebacker drop back deep like that. And that's why you want to have that underneath in route. Um, that's basically going to kill cover two all day long. If a guy's sitting in cover two, that's the combination you want to go to and get him up with it. Now let's run that same play, but let's just run it against random coverage. Let's go! What eighty? What eighty? Well, the sink does make the middle linebacker drop, and by well, let's look at the play. When you're when you're running a defensive call, you can kind of tell um, what the responsibility is by the animation for it. So if you look at the sink, see how the middle linebacker down there is playing a deeper yellow zone than the rest of them? That's that buck, imp two buck principle where the middle linebacker drops deeper. Now it's going to give you it's it's designed, the principle is, it's designed to make you think, okay, I got cover two, but it's kind of a cover three principle because the middle linebacker drops back. But you have to have good safeties and you have to have a good middle linebacker. If you have a slow middle linebacker, a middle of the linebacker that doesn't have good awareness and doesn't have good zone coverage, he's not going to drop back far enough. He may bite on that underneath route, and then you're going to get picked apart. Um, this works really well with Seattle's defense because they have two great safeties and a really good middle linebacker who's got good speed and good coverage, he can drop back and he can take that away. But you're still giving up that 10 yard pass underneath if they run that deep in, which most of the time I'm going to pair with the post route specifically for that reason. Um, but you're right, the middle linebacker would drop a little bit deeper. Even here on the regular cover two, the middle linebacker drops deeper. You know, most, most cover twos are like that now. Now cover four is more reminiscent of what a normal cover, or normal linebacker would do. He's going to play a little bit shallower zone, but he doesn't need to go as deep because you've got both safeties playing in the middle. We'll go back to it against random play. 
And let's see what we got. Now we got two safeties high, and we've got what looks like a man look on the outside. But knowing that it's man, you have different options. Um, uh, hot ride him into the check and release again. I don't really like this play against man. Um, you know, if I had better or if I had lesser corners, I could maybe look at the outright try to beat it, even though I don't like an outright against man coverage. At least not in this game. Um, right still probably our best option, followed by Rudolph. Um, but they're going to have to win matchups there, which you know, against this defense aren't, aren't a given. So I didn't really like any of those options. Um, Rudolph was covered pretty well. But out of all of my options, I had to do something with it. And that one I felt fairly confident that you know, he was going to get open um, right he breaks open right there but that's a little that's a deep pass it's over a 20 yard pass and as we've seen before trying to thread passes with this version of teddy bridgewater isn't a good idea plus we're trying to hit one guy that's covered by three guys that's not a good option we never want to do that so we just sit here we watch like okay well rudolph is neck and neck with this guy i mean he's blanketing him but it's a one-on-one -on -one situation and he's behind him so as long as you don't you know overthrow the receiver you know or whatever you just throw it right to him which he does here he's gonna make the catch or maybe the guy's gonna hit him and he's gonna drop it but at least it's not an interception at least you're not losing yards and i made the call just at the right time as you can see if i held the ball any longer i'm getting sacked so i had to get rid of it when i did um also it was man coverage on the outside and if you watch these guys um both of them were pretty tightly covered. Now, Jennings over here does get a break on Maxwell, I think that is. But that's a deep, that's a 20-yard out. Um, and it's to the far side of the field. Like, I'm not confident in Bridgewater hitting that without Maxwell jumping that. So you just take the easy route underneath. You know, it might be an incompletion, might be a completion for seven yards, but you take that and you move on to the next play. That's uh, Tyler saying that you know he's got Manti Teo on his team and that Teo might not have you know been able to drop back and take that away and that could be part of the problem. You know Teo's still young. I don't know how much development he's put into him, but if he doesn't have you know a high zone coverage at least a 75, if not probably an 80, if his awareness and play recognition aren't up over 75, 80, also. He's probably not gonna. He's he might bite occasionally on that underneath route. He's probably not gonna drop back deep enough. Um, I run into that, you know, with my team. My middle linebackers haven't had great coverage, um, and they always they either usually they drop too far back, um, but they always give up the underneath route. So if I have a middle linebacker playing zone coverage, which I do predominantly, and I play well, I play more cover three now, but I play I used to play a lot of cover two. Um, I want my middle linebacker to have good zone coverage and good awareness and play recognition that he can react to things and, you know, he can drop back deep when he needs to or he can come up and, you know, shut down a, a short pass, you know, depending on the situation. So that's basically um, you know, some concepts to take away man coverage um, and then obviously cover two. So now we'll look at the one that's becoming the big thing now popularized by the Seahawks is cover three. What can we do to cover three? There's a lot of different options as far as beating cover three. Some of them work better than others in this game. Um, but if I'm playing a team that's running cover three, basically two things that I'm going to go to. Um, not sure which play. The deep out, I don't really like running that deep of an out. So we'll look at the, the under Y option. Basically, um, what I want to do here, if I'm playing cover three, I'm going to have to set this play up. It's not going to work by itself. But I like to run outs against cover three. Assuming that the cover three is one in which both cornerbacks play deep. Uh, so we'll look at that also. But I want to run an out concept more often than not. Now, curl flats will work also. So you can definitely run that. It just kind of depends on um, the situation. But we're going to do the under Y option, and I'll show you how I would set that up. Go to dime. We'll look at the 
we'll go with buzz press. That's pretty typical. So this one's a little bit harder to recognize because they're starting off in the too high safety look. So you're thinking that it's cover two. If this was the case on this particular play, if I see this defense, what my read's gonna be here is I'm going to look to square Jennings because I know against zone, he's gonna come open. You know, if this, But it, they're setting it up in a man look because they're pressing. So this looks like two man under to me. Um, I'm still probably gonna look to Jennings and then I would look to right uh, with my back, my backup being Kyle Rudolph. Now we know it's cover three. Um, and this one being cover three that um, the linebacker or the, the inside cornerback is gonna kinda come into this little flat route. I'm not gonna look to right, um, but you know, um, basically that is a concept that can tackle going without route, just depending on how it looks. Um, but this one's particularly, I'm just gonna look to Jennings, then I'll look to right, then I'll look to Rudolph. And Jennings is open, and because I, I, I mean, it kind of plays against this route. Um, this route I love to run against zone coverage. Uh, I'll run it against man too, because if it's zone coverage, they're always going to back up with this right coming off, and they're going to leave him open underneath. I run this concept a few times a game, um, but it's very effective. If I have a third and five, high percentage of the time, some version of this combo is coming. So this is a, you know, this isn't the exact play that I was wanting to go with, but I forgot that that route was on this play, and that's a very good way of attacking zone defense. Run the guy off right there, and then you come underneath, and it's an easy six or seven yard game. Now, what I wanted to do when I first saw this was streak out Jennings here to run that cornerback off deep and then throw the right underneath of that. It's all going to depend on this cornerback, though. Uh, if that cornerback that's on right right there covers him because he's supposed to take away the slot, this could be a route that I don't want to run, and then I have to come back to something else. But normally what I would do in this situation is I would hot, I would, uh, hot route Rudolph into a drag route. So this basically creates a flood concept, which a flood concept is one of the things that are designed to beat cover three. Try to run the outside cornerback off with your next read being to the out. If the out is covered by that cornerback, Rudolph is gonna be wide open underneath. Now the linebacker came across with him, which generally doesn't happen. That's your middle linebacker. Generally he's gonna stay in the middle, but when you have a good middle linebacker, he's like, okay, I have my linebacker out there on Rudolph. I don't have to worry about him. He's gonna drop back. He's gonna see you know, that Rudolph's not going deep. He knows he's got the other side of the field covered. He knows this side is covered, so he's like, well, I might as well stick with Rudolph. That's just good linebacking right there, and that's the benefit of having a really good linebacker in the middle. But we'll go and look at the uh, replay. So basically, as I said, um, Jennings is running off the corner out there, okay? So my read is going to be right at 17. And he breaks. Now, initially I was like, okay, this might be open because the cornerback broke in there. But as soon as he, he takes one step forward and then he starts dropping back. And I'm like, nope, don't like that. Can't throw to right. That's going to get picked off. Now, I watch Wagner come across with him here. And I'm like, I don't really like this. He's not as open as I thought he was. If Wagner stays in the middle of the field or if you have a lesser linebacker that's kind of staying in the middle even though he doesn't need to, then that's a situation where Rudolph would be wide open down here. But this is still a situation where you pick up a couple yards. Now, if it's third and five, you're not going to get the first down, but you're not taking a sack. And if you are really at the 30-yard line, you're still getting, keeping yourself an opportunity of kicking a field goal, which is you know, what you want to do if you're in scoring position. You want to preserve that opportunity of getting points. Move the ball and get a first down, great. But if not, then take what you can get. So now let's run that same play against a random defense. Forgot what I was running. I forgot what play I was. Well, that that's bugging me. Okay. 
example here, we'll run this as a basic, same basic concept as what I was initially wanting to do, backing Move cover three. Okay, Move so what do we see here? Well, we have two high safeties, but free safety comes to the middle of the field. Er Earl Thomas makes his way to the middle of the field. So automatically, I know something goofy is going on here. This isn't a cover two. This isn't a cover four. Um, more than likely what's going to happen here is Chancellor, who's the right safety, is going to drop into the middle, and this is going to wind up being a cover three. So, and with the, both of the cornerbacks playing off coverage here, what I would want to do here is I actually want to go to Jennings or Johnson, um, not the underneath route, because that underneath guy, as we saw in the last play, can be taken away. What I would do is set it up like this. I actually want to run the deeper one here, but here I'm going to switch and put right playing deep off to kind of run that corner off and then have this the deep the corner on the right side kind of think about him while Jennings cuts to the sideline underneath um, as a backup because I, I am thinking this is cover three based on the way that the safety moved over to the middle same concept here I want to want to run the um, drag route underneath because if he takes away that out I still want to have a check down I want to have something I can go to and I'm not confident Asiata um, getting open on that angle route against zone defense. Another thing you can watch here is you can watch, this is a little bit more risky play, especially against this defense, but because I streak right right there, and he does have a speed advantage, and Johnson's running a streak on the outside, if Chancellor does come underneath, that means that Thomas is going to have to make a decision between one of those two guys, and one of them might come open. Now, Richard Sherman's playing a deep deep third over there. So Johnson's probably going to be open, and he's going to come over and take away right. But a lot of guys see this, and they say, ooh, it's right. This guy, you know, Maxwell over there is going to take away Jennings. This guy's got an advantage. I try to throw that, but then Thomas comes underneath as the middle safety and picks it off, and that's where guys get in a lot of trouble. So it's it's an option. It's risky. Um, you can watch it, but I wouldn't. I would just take – I'm all about taking – what the defense gives me and not taking a whole lot of risk. So I'm going to look at the Jennings and then Patterson's going to be my, my check down under here. The perfect throw in your pass. Exactly what I expected to have happen. Let's go, Blue 58. What's up, Viking? Man, I'm sorry to hear that. I hope, I hope he makes it, man. I hope he's okay. All right. So we'll take a look at it from up top. So basically, exactly what I thought happened, happened. Basically, it's a cover three. Um, it's just kind of a, a goofy setup. It's probably a glitch, actually. Um, well, it's a, actually, it's a blitz. It's a, a slant blitz, I think. So Chancellor comes in the middle like I thought he was. And it gives us basically a cover three look. Because I streak, I put um, right 17 on the streak, that runs off that corner on the inside. So now I have everything wide open, okay? And as long as I hit this right at 10 yards, right as he's hitting his break, he breaks open, he beats the coverage, it's an easy completion. Now, what we see again, this is actually kind of weird because Chancellor, um, really this looks like man coverage, this looks like a cover one blitz. At least they played it like man. Um, because Chancellor comes down, he, he takes Patterson, he comes all the way across the field. Now, had Maxwell broke on Jennings and that not been open, and I not like the way it looked, I could still hit Patterson underneath here. He's going to be a little bit faster than Chancellor. He, the worst going to catch it for a two or three yard gain. Uh, you know, he might be able to catch it and get a few more yards, but Jennings was open, so that was the easy play. You know, if I'm looking for a first down, I got it, and chains move. We'll look at a couple different options. Now, this one's basically the same setup, and this one's going to be um, cover two man or uh, cover one man is basically the look that we're giving us. Okay, it's cover one man. I wasn't partici or I wasn't expecting that one to be played like man coverage, but the safeties or the cornerbacks were deep, so I was willing to take a shot on that out route. Here, I'm not. I'm not trying to run any of these out routes right here. So I want to completely change what I'm running. Um, if this is man coverage, I know Patterson is my fastest guy. He's going to be faster than anybody that's covering him. So what I want to do is put him in, in a, 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 a 
under route right here. I'm going to put right and Jennings and streaks. I want to run those corners off. My first read, if this is man coverage, is going to be Asiata because he's going to have the deeper route. He's going to get me probably four or five yards if I get to completion, maybe a little bit more. But if for some reason they take him away, then I want to go to Patterson underneath, who's probably going to outrun that guy. And since I ran off both of the receiver or both of the DBs over here, he's got a good potential for, game, uh, for yards after the catch. Now they covered that a lot better than I wanted them to, but it was the coverage that I was expecting. So when we look at this, um, it was cover one, like I thought. The uh, linebacker actually played Patterson way better than I thought he would. He stayed with him um, stride for stride. I looked at that, I'm like, I could hit that and complete that, but it's only two yards. I also noticed that the linebacker that's covering Asiata is coming all the way across the field. So as soon as his momentum's taken him that way, he doesn't know that Asiata's cutting right here. So as soon as Asiata cuts, I'm like, okay, I have a small window to get this in here. Okay, I should throw it right there. I actually waited a little bit too long and threw it here. But when I see that guy coming across, as soon as Asiata makes his cut, if I throw it right here and hit him on his break, He's got a little bit better chance of trying to take that upfield for a couple extra yards. As it is, I wait a little bit too long, but I still barely get it in there for seven, what turns out to be a seven yard. A little bit risky, but the basic concept was still there. I should have thrown it right when he's breaking and the, and the guy's going the wrong way and hit him with a little bit more momentum. I still got away with it, though. All right, so now we've got a cover three look again. So... We want to go back to what we did before. We want to send right on the streak. Tiger, 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 and Jennings tiger, to the outside. Board, board. Um, and then Norm. Um, normally I'd run Patterson on the underneath route. Now, sim leagues, you have to be careful because a lot of sim leagues don't allow creating on the fly. And I don't personally right like it. This is one of the rare situations that I'll create something on the fly. Ideally, you can have a, if you had a custom playbook, you'd have that as an audible and you could automatically you know, switch to a play that basically has that formation. We don't have custom playbooks, um, so we don't have custom audibles. We can't set up our own audibles, so sometimes you got to kind of make it. But in a sim setting, you don't want to do this every play. Now, this is just a rare situation where against the defense that I had, um, I set it up, you know, to take advantage of what I was seeing, which is basically creating a, um, a flood concept to take advantage of cover three. So again, I streaked off right. He's running off that. EB there and Jennings is running the out he's playing off coverage as soon as he like he hasn't even he hasn't even broke yet but I know right as he's getting there I'm throwing it right as he's about to make his break see he, and he plays it well if I wait too much longer he's going to jump that so I get it just in time 10 yard gain first down so well again uh, Mad Viking is asking best pass play to get five yards and Going back to, you know, the concepts when when we started the video, you have to know what you're what you're playing against because not there's not a one size fits all play for the most part. There's a lot of different things that, you know, can get you 5 yards, but it's going to be dependent upon what the defense is giving you. You know, as I said, if you're playing um, I'll just go through a formation like a typical formation that you might run um, is this, say, it's a, a four wide look. Um, so what are you going to try to do to get five yards? Well, it depends on what you're going against. Um, this flood concept on the bottom is one of those where that, um, that flood breaks. And I think he's, he breaks about seven yards or so. So that's one that can get you and he it can definitely get you over five yards. If you're playing a cover three, um, or you're playing man coverage where you have the advantage against man coverage. Um, if you're playing a cover two sink, then that flood concept is, this is a horrible play to run. Um, at least on the outside concept, because it's going to get picked off more often than not. So you don't want to run that there. Um, the slot cross is a great um, concept to run if you're playing against man coverage, uh, because you, ha you have to have a speedy guy that can get open, but 
if he gets open, he's kind of running at an angle there for about five yards, and then he cuts in and up a little bit. So as soon as he makes that cut, if he's in man coverage, he's going to beat that coverage and hit him there for about a five-yard gain. Um, could be a big play, depending upon what everything else happens. Um, another play that I would like to run for a five-yard gain, um, here's that play that I was looking for earlier, is this under Y option. That little play on the left, the little... Uh, it looks like it's uh, out and then in, but really when you run it, it's not. Um, he just runs kind of a rounded off in route um, at about five yards. That's a good play to run against um, against zone coverage, you know, cover two or cover three. A lot of times that inside receiver running the out is going to pull the coverage back and allow the, the, the left receiver the in to cut underneath them. And a lot of times you can cut that for a five yard game. Um, curl flats are a possibility depending upon what you're running. Um, if you're running, um, you're up against the cover three, you can run the curl flat. Uh, to very, pretty good success, actually. If it's against cover three, the curl's gonna cut inside and underneath the deep route, and the flat concept's gonna pull the guy that's covering the flat, and it's gonna leave him open. So that's a great play for you know a five to 10 yard gain. Um, but you don't wanna run it against man coverage because it's gonna get taken away way too often. They're gonna jump it, pick it off. Um, Cover two, it, a little bit more tricky. Um, cover two can work, but usually you have a linebacker that's playing inside, um, and you know, it can get taken off. So a little bit more tricky. I, I like cur curl flats against um, cover three. Um, against man coverage, the angle route is a really good play. Not always going to get you five yards. It's really going to be dependent upon the linebacker that's covering the running back and how fast your running back is, but. Curl, or the angle route is a good play for five yards against man coverage, and so is slants. I mean, obviously a slant by def by design is designed to take advantage of man coverage, um, but you have to worry how good are their quarterbacks. If you come out in slants and they're pressing and they have great press and great coverage and better speed, then it's going to get taken away. So there's just not one play by definition that can get you five plays. There's a lot of different plays that can get you uh, five yards, excuse me. Um, you just have to know what the coverage is that you're going against and, you know, try to pick one. Uh, Z-Spot's another one. Uh, Z-Spot's generally one that's more or less going to get you three or four yards, um, but it really depends on what you're going against. If you're going against a cover two on the Z-Spot, the cover two guy, the cornerback, is going to come down to play the running back releasing out of the backfield, and the safety is going to play deep so that... Um, inside receiver running the corner route is a lot of times going to come open. You can hit that for 10 to 15 yards. If you wind up being against a cover two sink or a cover four, then a lot of times the spot will come open underneath. Let's hit that for a two or three yard game. So it really, um, really just depends on on what you're looking for. So, all right, Viking. Sorry you can't hang out, buddy. I hope your day gets better. I hope your grandpa's okay. So those are basically, I mean. Everything about playing on offense is all about have, being able to dissect what the defense is doing and knowing how you can attack it. Um, if you don't know how to attack certain coverages, go into the tutorials and run those tutorials and get better at identifying coverages and learning what concepts are going to beat certain certain defenses. So I'll go through um, I'll go through another one here. We'll look at the flood concept. This is basically the same thing. Um, that we were trying to do when we were creating our play. It's just a little bit different. But we'll run this against the cover three. Do the cover three buzz press. Now, again, when we're looking at this, we're looking at it and it looks like cover two man. Now we know it's not, so we can still run this play. But if I was running this and I thought it was cover two man, I'd be a little bit concerned. Um, I would still look to right here because I know he's got a speed advantage, um, but I'm going to worry about that DB undercutting him here. Um, so if this was truly man coverage and I'm looking at it now, well, they just gave it away here actually. As we sat here long enough, here they're, they're showing us cover two man. But just a second ago, Chancellor stepped up a little bit and Thomas went back. But if you wait long enough, see here's Chancellor coming back and there's Thomas going back. So now if you see that, now you know this is not cover two man. Now you know that they're, they're showing cover three, they're just getting impatient and they, they tip their hand too early. If you see that, then you're like, okay, now I know it's cover three. Um, so that can that can play into it. 
But if I'm just looking at this and I'm like, okay, this is cover two, but cover two man, I'm gonna say, okay, Jennings is gonna run off or um, Byron Maxwell out there. This is gonna leave Wright one on one with this guy. If Wright can't get open there, then I'm gonna come back. Um, knowing how good their linebackers are covering, I'm probably not gonna look to Rudolph. I'm probably just gonna look for Johnson underneath. Hope that he's got a little bit of um, space and separation on um, uh, Richard Sherman. And then if either one of those are open, I'm probably gonna try to take off and run and at least get back to the line of scrimmage. But we know it's cover three, so. So, and that's the one thing that you run into um, with running against cover three is have that cornerback under there who can, he's, his route by design is to take away the flat, but there's nobody in the flat. So he's going to, he's going to drop back. Whenever you see that, I mean, cover four, cover two sync basically work the same way. Whenever you see all these guys dropping back and they're all playing five yards off the line of scrimmage, you have... I mean, if you hot route a drag underneath or you have a drag underneath, you can hit that. Now, again, going back, we play a sim league, so you don't want to sit there and run drags every play and constantly be checking down. You want to be a little bit more diverse than that and, you know, not take advantage of, you know, not take advantage of things. Now here, you're not getting a whole lot. You're only getting two or three yards, um, actually one yard on that one. But, you know, you don't want to do the same thing over and over again. But on key first downs when you need plays, you know, which is basically what we're talking about, Come out, you know, you see the cover three, you see everybody dropping back. You look at right, that guy's dropping back. You can't throw it the right. So you're like, this guy's riding wide open under here. That wasn't the greatest pass. If he leads him a little bit better, maybe leads him upfield, he can get a couple yards. He only gets a yard, but it's not a turnover. It's not a loss of yards. And if this is a third down and you're at the 30-yard line, you can still kick a field goal and put points on which is, you know, basically what you want to do. So... I'll, uh, I'll wrap it up with that one. You know, basically, you know, we went over the basic pr principles. You have to know what you're going against when you come out. Um, actually, I'll run, I'll run one more. We'll do a couple against random de defenses. This again, so you can kind of touch on what you want to look at at the line of scrimmage. Um, we'll look at slot outs. So again, here we have a one high safety, but both corners are playing up on the receiver. So this is telling me this is cover one that I'm facing. So if I'm in man coverage, I want to look at my, um, I want to look at my uh, matchups here, and I don't like any of them really. Now, part of why we have this angle right here is specifically for the reason if we don't like any of these, we can always go underneath. Now. What I'm probably going to do is Patterson's got a little bit better speed here. Um, so he's probably got a slightly better advantage, especially if he slides over and he gives them the outside leverage a little bit. So I'm going to look to Patterson, and then my, my read is going to be underneath the Asiata if I don't like what I see with Patterson. And I don't, so I'm just going to throw it underneath there. And you know, we get a D four yards out of it, which could set us up in a fourth and one, or at least we don't lose these yards. Okay. What do we have here? Now again, we've got one high safety, so we're looking at probably cover three. Our corners are both lined up 10 yards off the line of scrimmage, so we're almost 100% positive that we have cover three. Now this is a situation where I'm gonna ch I'm gonna change the coverage based on what I'm seeing. Um, in theory, this place could still work well because if that linebacker um, outside is blitzing, that's gonna leave Patterson wide open. Um, Underneath, because Johnson's going to run off Sherman. Patterson would be wide open. Johnson gets a block on Sherman. This could be a huge play. But I'm not 100% positive that this linebacker is going to be blitzing, right? So if he's not, he drops back in coverage. He's going to take away Patterson, which is going to leave me with only one option in Asiata. So what I want to do is I want to reverse those two routes. I'm going to send Patterson on a fly route, dagger, dagger. and then I'm going to send today. Johnson on the Two out route. And I did the smart route, so it goes back to 10 yards. Now, obviously, that only works if you're, you know, third and eight, third and nine, or something like that. The idea behind this is that Patterson's running the deep route. If he is indeed blitzing right here, Sherman's not going to come over and get him. So I can hit Patterson right away on fly route. And depending upon how everything works, that could actually be a huge play. If, for whatever reason, that linebacker decides to drop back into coverage and take away Patterson, then Johnson is still 
my um, possibility out here on the outside running that out route. I don't particularly like it against Sherman, but I like the possibility of what could happen with Patterson, so I'm gonna look at that. My worst case scenario is I try to dump it down underneath the Asiata, depending upon how the play breaks down. So, the linebacker stayed underneath, which is what I thought. Let's go. And I tried to hit Patterson right away. He did exactly what I wanted. Now, he actually was dropping in the coverage. He just didn't drop in the deep coverage. But he was actually playing... Um, it was actually a cover zero blitz. Um, he stayed underneath with the linebacker. And we tried to hit Patterson real quick there. Now, he winds up dropping. It should have been complete for a 10-yard gain. Um, but he did what I wanted him to do. He stayed underneath. Patterson was open. I tried to throw it soon and that was as soon as i could get it you know, the whole going through the whole animation that was as quick as i could get it off but depending upon the safety depending upon your receiver sometimes he's going to catch that sometimes he's not but you're not losing yards and potentially you're, you're picking something up now as we can see had i thrown basically that same um had i not thrown that one out and stuck with the out route you know if i if i had thrown that you know, right as Johnson's getting right here, instead of throwing it to Patterson, I'm throwing it to Johnson. He makes that cut underneath the Sherman, and that's probably a 10-yard gain, too. What do we got here? So now, we see the safety coming into the middle. There's one high, but that safety, we know by him coming in the middle and playing like a linebacker, we know he's blitzing, right? So basically, this is still going to be the same concept. Um, we still want to um, run off the linebacker, and then we're going to play the out route underneath there. Another thing you could do here is you could put Asiata in the flat, so that way if Johnson gets taken away by Sherman, you can dump it off to Asiata. So we're going to go X circle and R1 here. Now, that's exactly why I don't like throwing that route against Sherman, because I threw that super early, and Sherman broke on it. That's one of the things that you kind of have to know the personnel. Um, this one here, this is a, this looks like a punt coverage. And he's playing a really deep third there. Um, basically the same concept on this play here. You know, obviously we know Sherman's out there. I don't really like that, especially after that last play. Um, he already picked it off. What I'm probably going to do here is look and see where my advantage is, which is with Cordero. Well, I'm just going to put him on a drag round underneath. Tiger, tiger. And I'm just going to kind of take my chances that he can outrun the coverage and see what happens. You can also put that guy into a streak to kind of run him out if you want to do that. Um, the hope is, you know, we're looking at here, if I'm calling this play, it's probably like a third and four, third and five type play. So we want to try to get those, those yards. So, But we also want to get it out of there. If that guy's blitzing on the left over there, we want to try to get rid of this. So we're looking at Patterson and then Asiata as the backup. And that one worked exactly how we wanted it to. Um, the guy actually got picked on the crossing route. So when we run it, um, he's sticking with Patterson. And Patterson actually gets held up there for a second. Um, it does create a little bit of space there for Asada. Uh, for Asa. You can try to thread that in there. But he's going to get hit. It could get jumped. Just didn't like it. I liked the fact that there was all this traffic in there. Um, the guy's trying to run with them, and then right as I'm about to throw it, oh, they kind of run into each other. And then Patterson's faster than all those guys, so he gets to run up field and winds up getting a 10 yard gain out of it. So here we have what looks like a cover two look. Um, now, this is a situation where, when I, when, what I generally do in a situation like this, if I'm in this play and I get him out against a cover two, as we showed before with that linebacker playing in the middle, we kind of want to look and see what he's going to do. We want to create pressure on those linebackers playing in the middle. So if, by moving right over to the slot, I'm creating the situation in which that linebacker's got to commit to either right or Asiata. Okay, so if he plays underneath it and he wants to cover Asiata, then I can throw it to uh, right behind him. If he stays back on right, then generally Asiata is going to come open underneath. So. See how that goes. So my read here, I only have two reads. My read is going to be triangle and then R1. I could always put Patterson on a, a um, 
a uh, drag underneath, but again, you know, playing in the simulator, you don't want to just keep having the same things over and over again. In reality, it's probably a realistic thing, um, but you know, we don't want to abuse things overall. So I'm trying to show people how you can attack certain things without trying to manipulate coverages and take advantage of deficiencies in the AI. We're going triangle in R1. Now, that was a bad throw. But he did what I wanted him to do, and he created that right get space. It was, it was kind of a bad throw, but it was also a good defensive play. So right comes back. Right here, this is exactly what I want to have happen. Now, the guy's rushing underneath, and Asiata winds up being wide open. But look at how far apart those two linebackers are. And he's, he's breaking right there, right? So I throw that as his break. Well, the linebacker, when I throw that, he's outside of him, and Wright's got inside leverage, right? And he's breaking. Well, the linebacker breaks and runs around him to pick it off. And that's one of those things, like, I still don't think I read that poorly. Um, that's basically all I was looking for. I wanted, you know, you've got, like, a seven or eight-yard separation between two linebackers. You've got a wide receiver. You thread that in there, they're going to catch it more often than not for a good six- or seven-yard gain. Linebacker just makes a good play. Now, I could have played it safer and look at Asiata, who's underneath here, and hit him, and he's probably going to get even two. That would have been the safer play. Um, and, you know, based on the way that it happened, that's probably the safer route what I should have went with. But I know if I complete that, it's actually a six- or seven-yard gain. Um, again, not every linebacker is going to make that play. We can run this a couple times. He's not always going to make that. But, you know, if you're really playing smart and you're playing safe and you're trying to take what the defense gives you, dropping it underneath Asiata is probably your safer play. So now we know, I know just based on what they're doing here, that this is a man blitz, a double safety blitz. This is actually going to be an all-man coverage, and the two safeties are coming deep. First thing I want to look to when I see that is this my matchup out here. Cordero's going to have the speed, release everything. And so this is a uh, Cordero Patterson's got a lot of speed against another another four or a number four cornerback. Um, it's not guaranteed to get open, but there's a good possibility of it. I also want to know that I got a quick check down underneath. So I'm going to hit Patterson on the streak, and then I'm going to put Johnson on a drag underneath. So what I want to have happen here is I want to hit, if Patterson winds up getting open, if there's some kind of screwy coverage or something like that, Patterson winds up getting open deep, this could be a huge play because there's no safeties back there. Um, then what I want to do is I can still look to Asiata and see what happens with him. Worst case scenario, maybe the, um, there's a pick that gets created with Johnson on the drag route and I have him open up. We're going X, R1, and circle. Oh, and I looked at that and I liked the way it looked for Asiata, so I tried to hit him. It was a terrible throw. I get so used to playing with Teddy Bridgewater. Um, that's a 93 overall now, so playing with this version of Teddy is not as much fun. So I streak Patterson. Um, he gets good coverage. I don't really like the way it looks. But what I saw here is not only are both cornerbacks blitzing, but we also have a linebacker that's blitzing. Um, yeah, the one linebacker and both safeties are also blitzing. So as soon as I see that, I'm like, okay, this is wide open. Asiata is wide open here. Now, Sherman is like five yards behind Johnson, and I could certainly be okay with throwing that to Johnson underneath. But what I was hoping to have happen is I throw this to Asiata behind Sherman and he's got room to run. Because if he catches that right there while Sherman's still not reacting to the play, I could potentially head up field before Sherman catches him and get a bigger play. Whereas if I throw this underneath here, yes, Johnson's got quite a bit of yardage, but I kind of expect that Sherman's going to make up that, that uh, ground when I complete it stop him about four, five yards. I was hoping that this was going to be more of a play, but it was just a bad throw, and it winds up being a completion. But it's not a loss of yards, and it's not a turnover. So we'll run one more here, take a look at what we got. Now this is going to be, um, well, usually it's cover one or cover three because we have the one high safety, but I'm guessing that this is like a press cover three with um, a strong side blitz over there. My team, I would have more speed, and I would try to look to streak somebody, but I don't like that against these guys here. So, I don't really like this defense at all. Asiata is going to be my number one read, and because we're bringing a strong side blitz, what I would probably do, um, well, 
what I wanted to do and what I did was two different things. What I wanted to do is I wanted the Street Patterson to kind of create more space, and then I was going to run a drag underneath. This one's a little bit different. Both the linebacker, um, this is the dime coverage. So, oh, they have a 3 2. So, two linebackers are blitzing. And it looks like a cover 2 with a blitz in the middle. Um, so, this one. I'm basically going to look at, I'm just going to hit Patterson on an in, but I'm basically hoping that's going to happen here is these two linebackers are blitzing. The cornerback to sign up over Patterson is going to release him and take Asiata, which is going to leave Patterson up. He decides to stay with Patterson, and Asiata should come open behind him. We're going to go X and R1 on this one. So we kind of stayed back with Patterson. We didn't wind up getting the first down if we needed five yards, but we got a couple yards. Um, and it's a situation that sometimes that's actually going to work out for us, and we're going to get more yards than that. Now this looks like... This actually looks like cover six to me, because we have a press on the right side and a deep coverage on the left side. So we're going to have a cover two look on the right and a cover four on the left, which actually isn't a bad thing. Um, considering this coverage but what I want to do here is I want to ideally I want right to come open because this corner I'm hoping is going to drop back and then create space on right giving him the out but if he doesn't then I just want to run Patterson underneath to pick up yards and maybe get a block and get the yardage in. does not play deep with Patterson or uh, with right like I anticipated I still got to dump it off underneath, but again, this is where people make mistakes on third down is they don't want, they, they have to get the first down they feel like, and they're not willing to take a check down and preserve, you know, preserve the ball and play field position, take the points, you're at the 30 yard line, take the points, or, you know, say the say you're facing the wind and you can't kick that field goal, um, then just take, you know, then take a, a fourth down, take a fourth and three, which is what you have there. You can run a, a, a different concept to pick up three yards and try to get in on the third down. You, know, you don't always have to get the first down. You know, sometimes, you know, if you're on the other side of the field, you're at the other 30 yard line and you run this, you don't get it, just punt it. Punt it, play field position, punt it, pin them inside the 20 and play good defense. You know, that's the whole, the whole goal behind it is you just don't want to turn the ball over. And too many people, you know, think they need the first down, and they try to force it. You know, they come out and they run this play. They watch the corner. He drops back like I want him to, but he doesn't drop back far enough. He stays underneath the right. Well, if I throw that, it's going to get picked off. Um, you know, Asiata coming out here, I don't like that because look at the linebacker. He's staying inside of Asiata. I don't want to throw that because he's going to jump that and pick it off. So my only play here is my check down underneath to Patterson. I got to hit that, and I just got to hope, you know, if, you know, Right comes down and makes a makes a pick right there. I can maybe turn it upfield for a couple yards, but he doesn't. So I'm just going to take it, you know, take my two yard gain, and then decide on fourth and three whether I want to kick a field goal or if I, you know, if I can go for it on fourth and three. Um, you know, you look at that, but you you just don't want to turn the ball over, um, and you don't want to take a loss of yards. So that's the basic premise. So hopefully, that gave you guys some insight into you know, have a plan, you know, when you're calling plays. Call your plays because based on what you think is your opponent is going to do. If you think he's playing a lot of cover two, then run something that's going to attack cover two. If you think he's playing going to play man, then run something that's going to take advantage of man. So that at least your initial play call is exploiting what you think um, the defense is going to do. Then when you get to the line of scrimmage, take a look at it, analyze the situation. If the defense is not giving you the look, if you thought it was cover two and they've got one high safety and you know you're against cover three or cover one, take a look at your play. See if you have routes that can attack that. And if you don't, then call an audible or try to get a quick hot route to take advantage of what they are giving you. And worst case scenario, you know, make sure you have your three reads, at least two, but at three. Usually, your second, if you only have two reads, the second one's got to be a short check down, one that you can, you know you can get rid of, maybe pick up a couple yards if something good happens, break it for a few yards more, but also something that you know that's going to be safe and that's not going to lead to a turnover. And then, as it plays out, look at what happens and go through your progression. If your number one read's not there, 
don't force it. Don't turn the ball over. Look to your number two read. If your number two read doesn't look good, then go to your check down. Complete it for one or two yards. Don't lose yards. Don't turn the ball over. Live the fight another day. That's that's what you want to do every time on offense. So hopefully that helped you guys a little bit. Again, I'm going to um, put this on YouTube. I might cut it up a little bit to shorten it a little bit, but you know, that's basically how you want to go about you know approaching passing the ball um, on Madden 15 this year. And... You know, moving the ball and making sure that you're not turning the ball over and putting yourself in the best position um, to win. So uh, be sure to check us out on uh, Twitter. You can follow me at RealMajesty95. You can also follow um, us at PX1Sports. You can also check out my Twitter. My Twitch is twitch.tv slash majesty95. You can find us on YouTube slash majesty95 or youtube.com slash px1sports. And lastly, be sure to check us out at px1sports.com where we host the best leagues on the planet. Hope that guys helped. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I will see you guys next time.